Hello, hi, my name is Hannah and welcome to this video. Not too long ago I uploaded a video of myself reading a bunch of sad books to see if they would make me cry and ever since then people have been asking me for my personal recommendations of books that made me cry or made me emotional and while I don't have like a fully curated list of books that will make you cry so I can't make that recommendation video just yet, I do have quite a few recommendations of books that will just make you feel. But before we get any further into the video, I want to thank Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace is a platform to help you build your brand or grow your business. You can create a website to help you engage with your audience, sell your products, or share any content that you create. So again, a thank you to Squarespace, and we will get more into them later on in the video. But for now, let's get into all of the book recommendations that I have. So if you're going through one of those phases that I go through quite often, where I just start to feel like numb, and I'm like, I need to feel something again. I need to feel some kind of emotion and I need something to like tug at my heartstrings and just give me some emotion back so that you can remind yourself you're not actually heartless, then this list of books is for you. I cannot promise that these books will make you cry. Some of them definitely did make me cry. Um, some of them just made me tear up, but I promise you that all of these will make you feel something. They are emotional books. Some of them are pretty sad. Some of them less sad than others, but still pretty emotional books. So yeah, without any further ado, let's get into my list. I think I have a total of eight or nine books for you and hopefully you'll be able to find at least one book on this list that will make you feel. First up, I have one of my all-time favorite YA contemporary books and just one of my all-time favorite books in general, and that is The Astonishing Color of After by Emily X. R. Pan. This is a YA contemporary kind of magical realism book about this girl whose mother recently died by suicide, and now she keeps seeing her mother in the form of a bird. And it's very much just a story about grief and loss and how we cope with that and our relationships, how grief impacts our relationships, and obviously very much about a mother-daughter relationship. It is such an emotional story with some incredible, beautiful lyrical writing. The main character is also half Taiwanese and half white, and she spends a majority of this book traveling to Taiwan to visit her maternal grandparents and learn more about her family there. And so it's also very much about uh, cultural identity. And so it just covers so many different topics, and it does so beautifully. It is such an emotional story, and I can promise you that it is the type of book that will make you feel something. This is one of my favorite books I've ever read that deals with the topic of grief. I think it just does such a good job with it and it's such a realistic portrayal of it even though it has this fantastical element to it of her mother turning into a bird. So yeah, highly highly recommend this book. Even if you are not like a YA contemporary person, I feel like this book anybody could enjoy truly. So yes, can't recommend this book enough. All right, the next book that I have to recommend is The Stationery Shop by Marjan Kamali. This book is a historical fiction, slightly historical romance novel. And I've talked about it a couple of times fairly recently on my channel, but I will talk about it again because it's so good and more people should read it. It takes place in the 1950s in Tehran and it follows the story of these two young people who fall in love and it follows their relationship, mostly our main female character, for the span of like basically her entire lifetime. It starts when she's like, I want to say maybe 17 or 18 until she's like in her 70s. So we get to see everything that happens to her and to their relationship throughout all of that time. And it is so heart-wrenching and so emotional and just so good. This is one of those books that I just like couldn't put down. I just needed to keep reading it and I needed to finish it as fast as possible because I was so engrossed in the story. And it is definitely a very emotional read. I would definitely put a content warning on this for war and miscarriage. So just be aware of that before you read it if you're interested in reading it. But it's an incredible book. I can't recommend it enough. I love historical romance and I wouldn't really call this a romance romance, but that's definitely part of the story, a significant part of the story. But it's another story about about interpersonal relationships and identity and about the immigrant experience as well. And so I very much loved this book and I would recommend it to anyone, especially if you want something that is emotional and could quite possibly make you tear up at least a little. Next up, I have another historical fiction book, but this time this one is YA and that is Salt to the Sea by Ruta Sepetys. This is a World War II historical fiction novel set in 1945. It's inspired by a true event, which was the, as the book says, greatest maritime tragedy in history. And it was the sinking of the Wilhelm Gustav ship. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. I apologize if I'm butchering it. Um, but yeah, it was a um, passenger ship that was supposed to transport refugees to safety, specifically Lithuanian Jewish refugees to safety. But tragically, the ship and the passengers did not make it. And um, it's heart-wrenching. It's so sad. When I read this book, I was so angry after I finished it because I couldn't fathom that like, we never 
never learned about this in school. Like, I don't know why nobody teaches you this. I do know why they don't teach you this. It's because they don't want you to know about it, but like we should be learning about this. But it is such a good book. It's so incredibly emotional. Rudis Petty's is such a good author. This was one of the first historical fiction books that I'd read in like a long time that made me like historical fiction again. It's such an important book about such an important topic. It's just forgotten in history and I absolutely love it and I would definitely recommend it. I can't remember if this made me cry. I know at the very least it made me tear up, but it made me angry and that's still feeling something. So um, if you want to feel, I promise this will also make you feel. It might enrage you, but that that's still a feeling but it is so emotional and so worth it can't recommend it enough next up i have maybe in another life by taylor jenkins reed and i could absolutely recommend you um the seven husbands of evelyn hugo or daisy jones and the six but i think the entire internet is tired of hearing about those two books because they are everywhere and despite the fact that those are two of my favorite books of all time um, i'm gonna recommend you something else <laughs> because taylor jenkins reed's entire backlist is incredible and people only pay attention to those two books and malibu rising and i feel like people need to read the rest of her backlist because all of her books are so good. And honestly, I feel like any of them could be applicable for this list of recommendations, but I feel like Maybe in Another Life would be the most universal recommendation I'd have for this. I'm also a little bit biased because the main character's name is Hannah, and I never read about main characters who are named Hannah, so I'm slightly partial to this book because of that. <laughs> but it is also very good. It follows the story of our main character, Hannah, and one day Hannah is faced with the choice of choosing between going home from a party with her best friend or with her high school boyfriend. And so then the story follows these two separate timelines, one in which she chooses to go home with her friend and one where she chooses to go home with her ex-boyfriend. So you get to see how her life differs based on which choice she made. And it's so good. I love the premise of it. It's really unique and it's just really fun to read and also really, really emotional. I think as far as her backlist goes, this was the place where Taylor Jenkins Reid kind of started to experiment with what she ended up doing with Daisy Jones and the Six and the Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, where she did these like inner interview style books. Um, I think she was trying to experiment a little bit in this one and I think it worked really well. I love the concurrent storylines. I just think it's so fun to read about that way and it reminds me of those like choose your own adventure books that you used to read as like a kid, you know? So yeah, it's very good. It's definitely an emotional story. Another story about growing up and relationships and I can't recommend it enough. I definitely think this is a book that more people should read um, and it's one that will make you feel a lot. All right, next up I have a book that I've mentioned already a couple times on my channel, um, but it's because I really like it and I'm gonna recommend it here too because it's truly a book that will make you feel. And that is Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Toshikazu Kawaguchi. I know I've talked about it so many times already, but it's because I love it. This book takes place in a coffee shop that can transport you back in time and we follow around these different characters who are all somehow connected to this coffee shop and somehow related to each other. And several of the characters all want to go back in time. So we get to see how each of the characters are connected to one another and what reasons they have for going back in time, who they want to see, who they want to talk to. I will say this book is less sad. I don't really find it sad. I just find it like emotional and it's less overwhelming, I think, than some of the other books on this list in terms of like how emotional they are. It's just like a quiet story. That's kind of how I like to describe it. It's not very intense. There isn't a very like intense plot or anything to it. It's much quieter and much calmer and very character driven, but I love it and I cannot recommend it enough. Um, This book absolutely just made me feel the entire time I was reading it, I was just completely transported into the story, into that coffee shop, and it was like I was living in it. It's very immersive, and I found it to be like really vivid with the imagery. I truly just like felt like I was in the coffee shop, and I love when books are like transportative like that. And it really does just make you feel because I feel like there's something, at least one story, one character in this book for everyone to at least somewhat relate to. So yeah, again, highly, highly recommend this one. I know I've talked about it a lot already on my channel, but I'm gonna keep recommending it. Um, um, because it's so good. So before we get into the last couple of books, I once again want to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Like I mentioned, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for you to create your own website, engage with your audience, or grow your business. They have so many different features you can use. One of my favorites is definitely the blogging tools that allows you to post photos, videos, pictures, and share any kinds of updates, which you can schedule so it makes it even easier for you to post. If you're interested in sharing a newsletter with followers or subscribers or customers, they have a feature so you can create email campaigns that you can completely customize and tailor to your brand, which is perfect for that. And another one of the great features is that you can connect all of your 
social media accounts to your website and you can have them post on there automatically. So especially if you have your own business or if you're into content creation, it's a great way to seamlessly and easily connect your social channels to your website so that your followers can have easy access to all of your updates. So if you're interested in trying out Squarespace for yourself, go to squarespace.com for your free trial. And once you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash clockworkreader to save 10% off of your first purchase of a website or domain. I will leave the link and the code in the description box if you are interested in checking out Squarespace for yourself. But once again, huge thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. And without any further ado, let's get into the last few books on my list. All right, next up, I have a manga to recommend. And this is another one I've already talked about on my channel recently, but I am gonna recommend it again because it's that good. And that is five centimeters per second. So if manga really isn't your thing, I still highly recommend that you pick this up. I feel like it's a pretty good introduction to manga since it's just like one volume. I think that's technically two volumes that they've just combined into one, um, but it's just one story. It's very quick to get through despite the fact that it looks really long. It's not gonna take you very long to read it. And if you're interested in getting into manga, I do recommend this one, especially if you like emotional stories. I will say that there's a caveat with this. The ending of this book is incredibly frustrating and I know a lot of people hate it because of the ending and I don't blame them because it is truly incredibly frustrating because <laughs> it's like not fully satisfying um, and it'll make you pretty angry, but I loved it. Like sometimes I really like that in a book if it's done well, if it's done in the way I personally enjoy. Like it's just so good when you're that angry at the book, but it's still a good book, you know? <laughs> and that's how this one made me feel. This follows the story of these um, two characters who meet when they are in middle school and um, they start to develop a relationship and then as time goes on one of them moves away and so they have to start writing letters back and forth with each other to keep in touch and it's about them trying to maintain their relationship and maintain contact with one another and also about how much this relationship influenced the both of them and how that has influenced all of their future relationships. It's also a story about how sometimes some people can come into your life and you might not be ready for them yet because you haven't gotten over certain things that happened in your past. So a lot of it is very much like a um, right person wrong time type of thing and I really love that trope but again I know that that can be really frustrating but nonetheless it's a very emotional story and I can't recommend it enough. There's also an anime which I haven't seen the movie yet um, but I definitely plan to so yes highly highly recommend this one if you want to get into manga. Um, it's just so good and if you hate the ending please don't get mad at me but um yeah it's it's still worth reading I think. <laughs> All right and then along the same lines I have a graphic novel recommendation and this is probably the happiest book on this entire list by far I would say um but it will make you feel a hundred percent it'll make you feel and that is none other than Heartstopper by Alice Oseman. I am obsessed with this series. I'm in love with these characters. It's so good. I keep saying this every time I talk about it but like this series healed something in me like it truly just did it makes me so happy and it makes me feel so much in a way I had not felt while reading anything in a really long time and oh my god I just I'm in love and I want everyone to read it. <laughs> There's a Netflix adaptation coming out soon and I know plenty of people are super hyped for that and I am one of them. I am so, so excited about the Netflix adaptation. It's gonna be so good. The trailer just came out like yesterday and I had it on loop for like a solid 30 minutes, just like analyzing every scene because it's so perfect. The casting is so perfect. And so if you wanna watch the Netflix adaptation, I highly recommend reading the series first because my God, it's so emotional and so perfect. <laughs> this is a different type of emotional and a different type of like book that will make you feel. It's one of those books where when you're reading it like you just can't stop smiling and then you realize that you're smiling at like pictures and words on a page and it's it's so good though. It's so good. I can't recommend it enough. Please read Heartstopper. There are currently four volumes out now and they are so quick to get through but they're such good emotional reads and they're just the best. The absolute best. All right and then the very last book I have to recommend is a book that I mentioned in my five sad books video and that is none other than A Man Called Uva by Frederick Bachman. If you watch that video you know how much this book made me cry. I sobbed, um, but in a good way, like in a good way. It was a cathartic sob. <laughs> This book follows the story of this grumpy old man named Uva who just wants to mind his own business and doesn't want anyone involved in his life until one day he has these nosy neighbors move in who kind of try and get involved in his life and he is not happy about it. Um, and it's so funny. It's truly so funny, but it is so sad. <laughs> it is 
so so sad heavy heavy content warning on this book for suicide that is like the main theme of this whole story um but never in my life did i think i would read a book about suicide that would make me laugh this much like it truly it's hilarious but it's also so emotional but so happy and so sad it's every emotion under the sun like really and truly if i were to pick one book on this list to make you like really feel something I would say A Man Called Uva. The writing is super clever, the characters are all well fleshed out, and overall it is just a story unlike anything I've ever read before, and I can't recommend it enough. If you want to feel this will make you feel. But there you all have it. That is it for my list of books that will make you feel. I hope that this list was helpful to you in some way and hopefully you got some good recommendations out of this. If you'd like to see any other specific types of book recommendations, please let me know in the comments down below. I will definitely try my best to make them in future videos. But if you'd like to follow me on any of my social media, all of my links are in the description box as always. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in my next video. Bye!